150 different there are 150 different uh, cities throughout the country that are standing in solidarity with Occupy's Wall Street for a call for a general strike. And this is our Santa Fe version of it. Uh, we will be doing a general assembly uh, very soon. It will be located over there where the American flag is. This will be our decision making and sharing body uh, that we do here twice a week in town. But first, we I would like to introduce Daryl who is going to read for us his version of the Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. I'm Daryl. Can y'all hear? Yeah. All right, well, even if you can't hear, you may need to come in closer if you want to so you can get the full effect of Occupy Storytime. Much closer. Right. Much closer. Woo! Look at the volume. What? That's better. Oh, okay. Is this good? Closer. Yes. Closer. Okay. Even if you can hear, you may need to come in closer. This is Occupy Story Time. We're going to try to have a story to get us in the Occupy spirit. And it's not, it's not, it's a Dr. Seuss story. Okay. And uh, it's the story of, it's called The Lorax. And there's three characters. There's a narrator, a onceler and a Lorax, and all three of them are going to be portrayed by me. <laughs> and it's the story of how the truffle trees disappeared. It's, it's very relevant to Occupy. Okay. At the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing excepting old crows, it's the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old onceler lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum at the top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of mist-muffled roof. And on special date midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Loris was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. He lets down a pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of the great great grandfather's snake. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you pay the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in this stir, this great hole in his barbarous mouth. Then he grunts. I'll, 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 I will call you by my whisper of phone for the secrets I tell of the Yorias alone. Slurp! Down slurps the whisper my phone to your ear. And the old onceler lets whispers that are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly holes, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the songs of the Swami songs ran out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place, and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Under the trees, I saw the brown bobaloots frisking about in their bobaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle of fruits. 
from the rippling pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming was splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh buttermilk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what to do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle a tree with my chop. And with a great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took a soft tuft and I knitted a finid. The instant I had finished, I had heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of a tree I had chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharp and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty steam, I'm the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you have made out of my truffle a truff? Look, Laura, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I just chopped one tree, I'm doing no harm. I've been quite useful. This thing is of the need. A thing they need to find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. For you can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers of bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There's no one on earth who would buy a fool for need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the, the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for a place. I laughed at the Lorax. You stupid guy. You can never tell what some people will buy. I repeat, said the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called on my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole once loved family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Ditch, turn left, sharp right and south stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole once loved family was working full tilt. We were all knitting the knees, just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffle and trees. Then, oh baby, oh, my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at no time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker. I thought we were truffle and trees in one smacker. We were making the knees four times fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked at my new office door. He snapped. I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown bobaloots who played in the shade in their bobaloots snoots and happily live eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking of my trees on the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go round. My poor babaloots are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, and I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the one stuff, So big.
bigger I got, I bigger my factory, I bigger my roads, I bigger my wagon, I bigger the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more than needs, and I bigger my money. Everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old new Morax came back with more grapes. <laughs> I'm the Lorax, he weed. <laughs> he sneezed and he cuffled and snarkled. He sniffed Winsler. <laughs> he cried with a gruffless groan. Winsler, you're making such smogulous smoke. <laughs> My poor Swami Swans, well, they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. <laughs> and so, said the Lorax, please part my cough. I, they cannot live here. I'm sending them off. Where will they go? <coughs> I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words <laughs> about Bluffity Gluff. Your machine shuts on night and day without stop, making Gluffity Gluff and Sloppity Slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wunzler man, you. You're glumping the pot where the hummingbirds hum. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so <laughs> smeary. And then I got bad. I got terribly bad. I, I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, 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 and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering, 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 turning more truffly trees into the needs which everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields, there came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree clunk. And then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle a tree of them all. No more trees, no more the needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke snuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the mighty bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax. And I, the Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself up by the seat of his hands. I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks which spelt out one word, unless whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried, and worried away. Through the years when my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all my heart. But now, says the Wetzler, now that you're here, the words of the Lorax seem perfectly clear, unless someone like you who cares a whole lot nothing is going to get better it's not so catch calls the wensler he lets something fall it's a truffle seed the last one of them all you're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds 
and truffle of trees are what everyone really needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends will come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Occupy Wall Street is going to bet some truffle seeds. All right, thank you. Woo!